Good morning. With consideration to the Reserve Bank's policy target agreements, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand has today decided to leave the official cash rate unchanged at 2.25%. We will consider the inflationary outlook for New Zealand through analysing forecasts for domestic demand, international demand, supply side conditions, followed by a summary of the inflationary outlook, assumptions and risks. Domestic demand conditions. This slide shows the moderate rate of GDP growth we have seen in New Zealand since the global financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. Current GDP forecasts expect this to continue with annual growth between 2.5 to 3 percent. This growth is derived from strong domestic conditions that will be further elaborated in this section. The upward trend in the heavy traffic index indicates good momentum across the economy and it supports the forecast of GDP growth in the 2.5 to 3 percent range in the coming months. While overall consumption growth is reasonable at around 2 percent as shown on the graph, per person growth is touching at 0 percent on a per person basis. This indicates presence of disinflationary pressure in the economy. Total, total building work put in place in the March quarter rose 5.3 percent indicating strong growth in the construction market, led by continued inflation and housing prices. Forecast suggests construction mar market growth will continue at a steady rate until the Christchurch rebuild eases. We therefore expect constru construction to have a strong upward impact on inflation in the short term before tapering off towards 2019. New Zealand's tourism industry is booming and is forecast to continue increasing, led by increases in spending from Chinese tourists. The graph really speaks for itself. This is evident in the 2016 March quarter, with expenditure increasing by 6.3% to $18.1 billion. This is a very strong inflationary pressure in the economy. Migration is currently extremely high, rising to an annualised total of 70,000 in March 2016. This high level of migration stimulates growth in consumer spending and has been a major contributor to maintaining current GDP growth and the relatively strong domestic economy. Forecasts suggest that over the medium term, net migration will reduce, although settling at a higher longer term average. Despite this, we consider migration a strong inflationary pressure in the shorter term. Despite some cooling, Auckland house prices are still rapidly increasing at 16% per annum, which is also contributing to a strong demand in regional house mining markets as buyers exit the Auckland market. High house prices change how consumers perceive their wealth, resulting in an increased willingness to spend. This is a very strong inflationary pressure. Also of concern is the way historically low interest rates are fueling the housing market as overinflated prices pose substantial risks to the stability of the economy which needs to be considered in a decision to cut the OCR. As can be seen from the summary slide, inflationary pressure from domestic demand in the economy is extremely strong. This is being led by house price inflation, supported by migration, construction and tourism. These factors are contributing to a relatively buoyant domestic outlook. International demand conditions. China has seen a decrease in GDP growth to 6.9% in 2015 and is forecasted to fall further. This is due to the crash of the steel market and decrease in China's manufacturing market. GDP growth in USA is currently weak and is forecasted to remain low as demand in US exports continue to weaken. GDP growth in Australia is forecasted to marginally strengthen. This growth is attributed to increased export volumes and increased productivity. Global conditions are overall looking weak, with afflicted in the slightly declining GDP growth in trading partners. Combined with uncertainty and political risks, this results in decreased demand for New Zealand exports and is a moderate deflationary pressure. Dairy products continue to be at one of its lowest price points in recent years, with oversupply from Europe and weak international demand. Prices are expected to remain low before slowly rebounding towards 2018-19. Given dairy is New Zealand's leading export, the low price is of extreme concern and is a strong deflationary pressure. Looking at other key export commodities, we see positive market reels. Um, ANZ forecasts double-digit growth in meat supply and strong yields from horticultural prices, leading to increased profitability and moderate inflationary pressure on the New Zealand economy. As seen on the graph, the New Zealand dollar is at a historically high level and remains overvalued relative to the weak trading conditions that is facing New Zealand. This is reducing capacity pressures as it reduces demand for New Zealand exports and dampens inflation and tradables by reducing cost of production. While current forecasts predict a depreciation of the New Zealand dollar which would lift inflation, in the short term the reduced capacity pressure is a strong deflationary pressure. Demand conditions in the international market are weak, with the biggest impact being low dairy prices, which is having a big impact on rural GDP. There are, strong, there are further deflationary impacts from a weak international outlook and a strong dom domestic exchange rate. While other exports look up, the overall outlook is for reduced international demand. Supply side conditions. 
Although the labour force has increased with employment growth of 1.2% in the March quarter, the unemployment rate has remained generally constant around the 55 to 5.8%. This is due to high net migration and an increasing labour force participation rate, which have meant that labour force market conditions have been able to maintain spare capacity in the economy. This is a strong deflationary pressure in the economy. Inflationary pressures from wages is subdued and has remained largely steady since the recession at about 1.8% which is below historical norms as shown on the graph. This low inflation environment has allowed businesses to grow capacity to keep up with domestic demand without placing pressure on prices. All prices have fallen by 75% between mid-2014 and January 2016, but have somewhat recovered. However, they remain relatively low, which has been a key contributor to New Zealand's low inflationary environment. This is a strong deflationary pressure and has allowed businesses to maintain spare capacity. However, forecasts expect oil prices to increase over the next 12 months, which will cause substan substantial inflationary pressure by raising costs and reducing spare capacity. Analysis of the supply side of the economy show ample room for capacity to increase to meet the growth in domestic demand. Oil prices keep cost of production low, while strong migration is keeping unemployment steady and wage inflation low. This means supply side factors are moderately deflationary. Inflationary outlook and risks. From the overview of the economy is the determination of the Reserve Bank to leave the OCR at 2.25%. The domestic aggregate demand situation is contributing to strong inflationary pressure caused by high net migration and growth in tourism and construction. This is somewhat moderated by the weak international conditions. Meanwhile, aggregate supply has been keeping up with the demand pressures in the New Zealand economy with low wage inflation and low oil prices. This means that there is still spare capacity in the economy. This spare capacity creates an overall picture of a slightly negative output gap in the immediate term. Despite the current accommodative level of monetary policy, holding the OCR constant will not allow the Reserve Bank to achieve its 1-3% inflation target in the immediate term. However, it is the belief of the Reserve Bank that if our forecasts are realised over the next 3-6 months, inflation will move inside the 1-3% target band as shown on this slide. On this graph you can see the contrast between inflation in tradables and non-tradables. Non-tradables inflation is currently around 2%, reflecting strong domestic conditions. It is the deflation in tradable prices resulting in a low headline rate of inflation. This is being caused by a strong New Zealand dollar and low oil prices. Across the next six to 18, uh, sorry, 3 to 12 months, we forecast a depreciation in the dollar and a rise in oil prices. We believe that this will raise the rate of inflation in tradables, resulting in the rise in headline inflation. With consideration of the current uncertainty and the significant risk to the housing market of an OCR card, we believe that it is best to hold the OCR unchanged to allow tradables inflation to return to normal levels, which will see headline inflation move towards the target band in late 2016. This analysis is reflected in our forecasting of the output gap for the economy. Currently, we are running a negative output gap, causing inflation to be below target, about 0.4%. This is because capacity pressures are loose, with a high exchange rate, low oil prices and strong migration. In late 2016, the output gap becomes positive. This reflects forecast tightening in capacity pressures. A rise in the price of oil and the fall of the exchange rate will push cost of production up and tighten capacity. Decreases in migration will shrink overall growth in the labour force, allowing unemployment to decrease and boosting wages. And as reflected in the graph, you can see the output gap moving into the positive range, which will therefore result in the inflationary pressure that, in the, that the New Zealand economy needs to move inflation into the target band. Key forecasts and areas of risk are identified on this slide. The two key areas of risk are financial instability and continued deflationary pressure. Unchecked growth in housing prices could undermine financial stability as it increases the likelihood and severity of a house price crash, which would have substantial recessionary impacts on the economy, although we think in the current environment this is likely uh, moderated by emerging measures to uh, keep a lid on house prices. This is a key constraint on current decision making and must be monitored closely by the Reserve Bank. The other key area of risk is that inflationary pressure does not arise as forecasts are not realised. This would mean inflation does not reach the target band. The most sizable and significant risk, in our opinion, is that the New Zealand dollar remains elevated, which will hold inflation down. Other concerns are around oil prices remaining low, migration not declining, and a downturn in global GDP growth. If these forecasts are not realised, it is likely the Reserve Bank will have to further ease monetary policy in the coming cycles. Thank you. That concludes our presentation.
Oh, thanks, uh, Zachary and team. Uh, I just want to start off by uh, testing some of your knowledge about um, how monetary policy impacts the economy. So uh, obviously you've uh, recommended holding the OCR at 2.25 per cent. I was wondering if you could tell me if instead uh, we decided to lower the OCR, how that might impact the economy. So a lowering of the OCR decreases the cost of borrowing. So as a result, this will increase consumer spending because the marginal propensity to consume is higher than the marginal propensity to save. So we see an increase in consumer spending and investment, which is pushing the AD curve to the right, which is an inflationary pressure on the economy, increasing real GDP and, unemploy uh, and employment. Hmm. Yeah. And therefore inflation. Yeah, yeah, and therefore inflation. Yeah. Furthermore, a cut in the OCR would affect our exchange rate as um, when interest rates decrease, demand for our New Zealand dollar will decrease as well, therefore leading to a depreciation of our New Zealand dollar. Therefore, this makes our exports more attractive overseas. So by increasing our exports, we also increase our AD, therefore increasing inflation and our GDP and employment. Hmm. On the other side of that, with the whole exchange rate thing, right? If mm -hmm. we have a drop in the exchange rate, relative um, interest rates from overseas will mean the demand for our dollar goes down, right? Yep. Therefore, X minus M component of AD, our imports will become more expensive, and a lot of um, firms are based on production import, so therefore we might see a contraction in AS as cost of productions go up, yep. therefore that's another inflationary pressure within the economy. So you see a tightening of our spare capacity, yep. which is an yep. inflationary pressure. And in the current inflationary environment, a decrease in the OCR is probably what's looking likely and necessary. Mm. But the flip side to that is concerns around the housing market. Yeah, so what we'll see and what has been sort of tempered and the reason why we did hold the OCR in the first place is kind of lowering the OCR too quickly kind of adds fuel to the housing market because, as we said, if you lower the OCR, right, then it's cheaper money to borrow, right? So therefore you can fund and invest, you can get out of mortgage without having to pay as much back. So this encourages a lot of leveraging in the housing market, right? And what we might see is that people who may not even may not be able to finance the loan, say if the OCR went back up, we see a lot of financial st this financial stability risk because people might default on mortgages if they can't afford when the OCR eventually jumps. So that when the Reserve Bank makes this decision, it has to be like cautious of how many basis points it drops it by and when to drop it. However, yeah. you have to realise that the Reserve Bank has also bought in LVRs and other macro prudential policies to correct this housing market so they can actually reduce the OCR without with having not that much of a substantial risk for the housing market. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So someone to sum up? Yeah. Mm. Right, so the decrease in OCR would mean that demand for our New Zealand dollar decreases, making our exports more attractive therefore leading to an increase in aggregate demand. Furthermore, um, a decrease in the interest rates also mean that the cost of borrowing has lowered, therefore increasing consumer spending and expenditure, further increasing our AD curve, increasing GDP and our uh, inflation. However, um, sorry, as the OCR decreases, this also increases um, our cost to uh, import, therefore increases our cost of production therefore tightening our capacity pressures, further fueling inflation. On the other hand, the risk of uh, a lower OCR is you would fuel the housing market. However, this has, um, because of the, um, you, as borrowing decreases, you might find highly leveraged housing, leading to financial instability. But the Reserve Bank has addressed this by um, coming up with the new uh, LVR, which should uh, decreased risk of a, of a housing market crash. Okay, okay, thanks team, that was a very comprehensive answer. So annual net immigration to New Zealand is currently running at a record high. What impact would you expect this to have on the New Zealand economy? So, so I, th I think we see impacts on both the demand sense yeah. and the mm. supply sense. Mm. So, so I think as we highlighted in our consumption slide, um, it, it, it increased migration increases consumption in the economy just by virtue of adding more people to it. And so we see that reflecting consumption because consumption per capita is holding zero uh, percent, but the overall rate of consumption is increasing. And what that does is it acts as an increase in aggregate demand in the economy, which pushes uh, creates inflationary pressure there. Mm. On the um, supply side too, what we've seen with the influx of so many migrants and stuff is that the wage rate inflation has been tempered been really low right it's been pushing our space capacity is like we've been growing at a stable rate but also um, the people being employed has not put any capacity pressures yet so that's quite disinflationary in the fact that the fact like where the migrants are keeping up 
with this growth so we don't see any tightening in the economy therefore firms are not having to raise their prices um, we've also seen uh, um, because of more migrants coming in we've also seen the housing um, house prices the demand for houses go up because there's more people inside and this has also led to um, an undersupply and a shortage of houses which is which has fueled the housing market and which has um, yeah which has led to the housing market being just so high right now yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think what we're looking at from a demand sense is that we see aggregate demand pushing out, but we also see aggregate supply pushing out. Yeah. So, so you've got an uncertain impact on inflation, but you've got a clear impact in increasing the rate of output for the country, therefore increasing GDP. Mm. I mean, in terms of inflation, I think the question is, what is the skill base coming in, yeah. and how much are they productively adding to the yeah. economy exactly. and growing aggregate supply? Mm. Because Currently, we have seen that we've, we're having a skill deficit with the amount of um, migrants that are coming in. We're seeing a lot of chefs rather than people that we want, like qualified, qualified people. Yeah. To build an infrastructure, yeah. 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 infrastructure yeah. sector. Yeah. 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 yeah, so depending on where those people lie and what their skill sets are and how the New Zealand economy chooses to employ these people determines where the supply side is. And we're probably thinking that maybe aggregate supply, it's not necessarily, not all these people are having as much benefit as they could to the New Zealand economy. Mm. Exactly. So overall, maybe slight inflationary pressure, but still keeping up with um, You have to also look at this from the exchange rate. Um, this is also pushing up our exchange rate. It's um, because there's more demand from overseas countries. And what, and what this means is that this is making our New Zealand exchange rate overvalued, which is quite detrimental to our economy right now because this is affecting our dairy prices negatively as well. And, um, and this should just add to the overvaluing of the New Zealand exchange rate. Yeah, so I yeah. think it, there is some a discussion to be had around how we're, bringing, we're encouraging high value investors as well to move their money into the country, yeah. which creates some pressure on the exchange rate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So does anyone want to Jonas on that one, Abzak? Okay, so I think the two, the two key areas we see in the main economy are that it affects the supply side through uh, increasing the uh, capacity for workers, and so it's had the effect of moderating capacity pressures. At the same time, migration coming into the country increases aggregate demand. Overall, what we're seeing there is the rate of output is definitely increasing in the New Zealand economy, and that's contributed to New Zealand's GDP growth being around 25 to 3%. But it's also also the inflationary impact is unclear but might be slightly inflationary. In terms of the, the two other consequential impacts, migrants putting pressure on the New Zealand house prices, which is leading to financial instability, or the potential for financial instability, especially in Auckland. And secondly, there is an impact, a flashing impact from the impact on exchange rates, keeping it high through creating demand for the New Zealand dollar. Excellent answer, guys. What do you think the Reserve Bank will have to do to the OCR over the next couple of years in order to meet its objectives under the PTA? So I think obviously the PTA objectives are to keep inflation between 1% to 3% with a target of 2%, which is where the, where the Reserve Bank hasn't been able to meet that, probably given some of the tough conditions yeah. and the two opposing forces of house prices and low inflation that they're facing. So yeah. as we like underlined in our... Um, presentation is the wait what was the question again sorry so um the question is what do you think the reserve bank will have to do oh, yes, to the okay. ocr over so um given the uh, the reason why we put a hold was that we believe that the new zealand dollar is overvalued at the moment due to well sort of global conditions not being well and we strong domestic, yeah, yeah. And, stro and strong, strong domestic, domestic conditions. conditions so ba basically what we're saying by that is that our strong domestic economy is in turn sort of making our dollar overvalued and is yeah. underpinning so with our low dairy prices, we expect the dollar to fall, whereas at the moment we're... It's, it's still relatively not price yeah. competitive in international markets. So we would expect, given global conditions now, to have another drop, wouldn't we, in the yeah. OCR? Yeah. Mm. Mm. But, however, what we're seeing is not happening. And I think what we, what we have, I think, given what our assumptions that we put up, those assumptions haven't been realised. We've got yeah. oil prices at a new low. We've got inflation at a... Uh, uh, the exchange rate's still high. And so, in, especially in the next coming cycle, we would see the Reserve Bank cutting the OCR. Yeah because those forecasts haven't been realised. And I think we may need to see the Reserve Bank continuing to make additional cuts to the OCR yeah. over the next three to six months because we need to move inflation back up to that target band. And, the o and to do that, we think the primary issue is the exchange rate. Mm. And we need to have an effect on the exchange rate, a lot of that has to do with the OCR. Because currently, the um, ex New Zealand's OCR is 2.25%, which is relatively high by international standards compared to countries like Canada with 0.5% or Japan with a negative interest rate. And so that's making New Zealand an attractive place to invest. And so by 
decreasing the OCR, we've reduced that differential and helped contribute to pushing inflationary pressure back up in the New Zealand economy. Also, what we're currently seeing is that our headline inflation is at 0.4%. And this is largely being caused by our negative tradable inflation. Mm. And so through the through um, pulling down the exchange rate through the decreasing of the OCR, this would bring up tradable inflation and therefore bring up inflation, the headline inflation as a whole and meet and meet the, therefore meet the target range of the PTA. Yeah, because mm. currently we see our non-tradable inflation relatively in that target band yeah. and being really strong. But it's just mainly international circumstances and conditions that's really in a negative and therefore yeah. pulling that down mm. so we hope by depreciating the dollar and you know but through the interest rates we can correct that um, yeah. and return to the target and we and can, yeah we can see the effectiveness of it as the um, announcement was made that it was likely that the ICR would be cut and as yeah. the announcement was made the dollar dropped yeah, it right. dropped by um, it dropped by zero it dropped by zero um, yes. yeah. down from the mm. um, USA mm. and yeah. yeah. So I think the only other moderating factor that acts on the general consensus here to decrease the OCR is what's happening in the house price market. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that is the large constraint in the Reserve Bank at the moment from cutting the OCR. But I think given some of the macro prudential tools that the Reserve Bank is looking at, the increased loan to value ratios, mm. possibility to loan to income ratios, and continued efforts by the government to increase that, we think that provides enough cover, if you like, for the Reserve Bank to work to mitigate, uh, to, to use the OCR as a tool against inflation. Does yeah. someone want to sum that up? Yeah. Yep, so basically what we um, would see is that if the assumptions didn't play out that we were going on our presentation we went through, we'd see a definite drop in the OCR given that at the moment we think the domestic economy is buoyant and strong. We're getting around the non-tradable inflation where we want it to be, 2%. And really what's keeping us down right now is our non-tradable inflation, which is largely to do with the exchange rate being, as we think, in our opinion, overvalued by... Um, relatively high um, exchange rates compared to overseas, as well as New Zealand just being a stable economy, a good place to live. So if, with these factors playing out, a drop in the OCR would see our um, exports hopefully go back up, and we'll see that trade was inflation moving back into the point where we want it to be, to therefore get our target midpoint of 2%. Okay, great answer. Thanks, team. So as you noted in your answer, the Reserve Bank has recently proposed to tighten LVR restrictions. Uh, can you identify some strengths and weaknesses of LVR restrictions? So the LVR restriction is mainly targeted at investors, so we're changing the ratio from um, 30 and 70 to having to put a 40% deposit to a 60. So what this targets is really um, decreasing the amount of risky leverages put out in the market. And um, this will benefit our housing market, mainly because there's um, less chance of riskier leverages and therefore um, you're having more you're having more um, you're lending out more mortgages that will be definitely paid back mm. so overall in terms of financial stability you're ensuring that all of these um, mortgages given out yeah. will be paid back and the good thing about like Catherine said about the LVR right you differentiate first home buyers and investment buyers right and we're seeing in the Auckland housing market is largely fueled by investment buyers especially from overseas yeah. so by making investment housing buyers put down a 40% down payment you're sort of excluding the lot which are just putting down money on houses and racking yeah, up investment property yeah. for the cheap price of money in New Zealand, right? It's cheap investment loans. So I guess the big differentiation there is first home buyers are still getting a chance at getting a house, which is a big thing in the economy right now is for us, when we buy our first house and we've lived in New Zealand our whole life, which is a big political issue too. Yeah. So uh, differentiating that, the LVR is very good. How about some limitations? Uh, oh, just I think one more. I think mm. just coming back to the financial risk and how I think what the the LVR is a tool. It improves the liquidity of the banks and their capacity to 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 take a shock in the housing market, and that's a key aspect yeah. of why the LVR are an important tool for shoring up financial stability in the New Zealand system. Yeah, just, to just adding to that, sorry, um, it also adds some cushioning for the um, for the housing market when if the like how it's likely that the Reserve Bank is going to decrease the OCR so it does add some cushioning for the housing market. Hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So on, on the negative side? Yeah on the negative side I suppose with the LVR you're only targeting the big investors right and also with we might see the limitations that it's not going to solve the entire problem but we sort of know that it's sort of tempering it right yeah but there has to be other um, ma other things put in place, other macro potential um, policies, as well as working well with the OCR, because by itself, it won't solve the housing market. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and, and I think to an extent it is a bit of a blunt tool, so it's not it's not necessarily able to target every specific problem in the area, yeah. and, and so it's not a perfect tool for tackling the problem head on, but it does do those things in terms of shoring up financial risk and financial stability. Which is obviously a key target of the Reserve Bank, right? Yeah. Do you want to sum that up, Zach? Yeah. Okay, so, so I think what we've said there is that we think the, the LVR restrictions are good because one, there's, they've differentiated between first home buyers and investment buyers, which sits, I guess, with what New Zealanders expect or want and that their desire to build houses. But also by targeting investment buyers, I think investment buyers are playing a huge role in speculation of the market, and so it should dampen their sort of ability to work there. And then the second aspect of that was it improves the financial um, stability of the banking system by ensuring the banks will have enough leverage to cover uh, loan co to cover the costs and risk of a shock. On the flip side, I mean it, it, it's not the only solution, and it can't, definitely can't be a solution on its own um, because there, there are so many other factors. You know, we think that there's a fundamental supply and demand shortage in yep. the market that needs to be fixed. And secondly, it is a bit of a blunt tool in that it does sort of just try and fi yeah, fix the problem there without specifically targeting those. But on the whole, we'd be generally supportive of the ALF restrictions as something a Reserve Bank could do in, in the current situation it finds itself in. Especially for us. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, guys. Very comprehensive answer again. Um, so the latest outturn for CPI inflation was 0.4% on an annual basis. Do you think that the Reserve Bank is meeting its objectives under the PTA? Well, the PT, sorry. Ex well, yeah. explicitly, no. No, because the PTA agreement is to keep inflation between one to two, three percent at, at the two percent uh, median. Mm. However, at zero point four, we are way below that one yeah. percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and there was an allowance in the PTA for uh, for certain shocks <coughs> in the market, and that the Reserve Bank should focus on the. I think and it's the medium term. Yeah. is the phrasing. And right yeah. now, you've got to but cut the Reserve Bank a bit of slap, right? Because they're in between a bit of a rock, rock and a hard place, place, right? You have housing prices which is being a bit annoyed on annoying yeah. on one hand, right? So we can't drop the OCRs, and we're adding fuel to that. So because we're kind of it's more like a balancing act right now, and hoping that global conditions play out in our favour, it should hopefully return, right? Yeah. Yeah. But as we've been seeing, it hasn't been returning, so. Yeah. yeah, so the bank is playing a balancing act between its two objectives, one price stability and two financial stability, and so it's trying to almost juggle both of those. And I think probably if we're looking at the state of the economy, I mean, even though inflation is low, it's not being, it currently being detrimental to the economy, and even though house prices are high, it's not overly risking the financial system. So I mm. think we'd probably say the Reserve Bank is doing a good job juggling the current economic mm. circumstances they find themselves in, mm. well, you you find yourselves in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so other thoughts? Um, I think. Do you want to sum, sum that up? Yeah. So, so just summing that up, I guess the PTA does explicitly state that the um and headline the headline inflation rate has been between one and three percent. Hopefully, the target midpoint of two percent. But like we said, it's sort of it's really hard right now, right? We were juggling two objectives of financial stability and price stability, largely led by the um for price stability, largely led by um. What do you call it? Trade, um, tradable inflation, right? Which we're seeing because of global conditions is very low, and also led by the housing sector and financial stability. So by juggling those two, we think that the Reserve Bank, if global conditions do play out the way we're going, and if we see like assumptions are right, forecasts are right, we will return to that two percent midpoint, which is within the PTA, right? But um, um, if that doesn't keep, if that the assumptions don't play out, then we will need further easing or further action. But as it goes. I think they are keeping to the reasonable PTA. Okay, thanks team. That's your half hour, so you can, you can relax now. Um, thank you, some of those answers were very comprehensive.